Are you considering using AppGyver to build an app? Well, if so, I'm gonna cover the 10 things that you must know before you start building a web or a mobile app with AppGyver. Are you interested in growing and scaling your business? Welcome to the Silicon Alley Podcast, where you'll hear from entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and top performers on what it truly takes to grow and scale a business. You'll walk away with actionable insights you can apply in your own business and life. Now to William Glass, the CEO and co-founder of Ostrich, and your host of the Silicon Alley Podcast. Welcome. I'm William Glass, CEO and co-founder of Ostrich, and of course, your host of Silicon Alley. So I've actually built multiple apps using AppGyver, gotten them published into the App Store, and have used a number of other no-code tools as well. While there's no one-size-fits-all when it comes to no-code and low-code, there are some things that um, you've got to know about each platform before you decide to build. So today I'll be talking about AppGyver and the things that you must know before you build and decide to use AppGyver as your development tool. All right, so let's start covering the 10 things. The first five are all positive things that I really like and things that you should be excited about when it comes to using AppGyver. And the other five are limitations that you need to be aware of and make sure that they won't be a problem when it comes to the project that you're working on. So number one, the front end logic is flexible and intuitive and you can visually connect things. This was actually what really got me excited about AppGyver when I first came across it. It was very different than what I'd seen with all of the other no-code and low-code tools out there, is that you can visually connect the dots as to what happens when a user presses a specific button. What data do you wanna store? Where do you wanna share it? What do you wanna show them next? And you can literally draw out the flow and connect the dots. And I hadn't seen anything like that. And that's one of the things that makes AppGyver really unique and a great tool to use. The second thing that's really great about AppGyver is their documentation, support, and their forums. So they've really, really responsive when it comes to questions or problems that you run into. Anytime you're looking at developing or using a platform, you wanna know that you're gonna be able to get the support that you need and get questions answered because you're not an expert on the tool, especially just starting out. So you wanna make sure that it's easy to follow. And the documentation, which just is essentially their FAQ, how things work and tutorials and things like that, are really solid, easy to follow, easy to implement, easy to copy and paste into your own app when you want to. The second piece though that I think is even more important is that the team is very, very active on their own forums. So if you've got a question, something that's specific to your application, they'll help you solve it. I can't tell you the number of times that I was on there asking questions and despite the team being based in Europe and me being in the US, I was always still able to get answers to my questions within you know 12 to 24 hours. And that's both from the AppGyver team as well as from other developers and people that are, are more familiar with the AppGyver platform. So this is definitely one of the great things about their product is that they've got a really good support system between both staff and users. The third thing that's really important to know about AppGyver is that you can connect as many external APIs as you want. There's no cost, there's no limit, and this allows you to build more complex applications because you can connect other software products, bring in other databases, tools, information, resources into your app through APIs. Now, if you're not familiar with what APIs are, that's okay. Here's a video that explains them. But essentially what they are is they allow different software products to communicate with each other so you can connect things together. That's pretty much it. There's a lot more complexity and nuance to that. But at the end of the day, APIs allow you to connect to various different tools. Now, if you're still a little confused and don't really know what that means, that's okay. Looking at API documentation to me was like looking at gibberish at first. Luckily, there are plenty of information of how to actually look at API documentation and figure out the things that you need. You can also use tools like Zapier, which allow you to automate API connections between applications on the back end. So you can just trigger one thing in your app that then let's Zapier take over and handle all of the stuff that needs to happen in the back end. But the great thing is that if you want to integrate everything directly into your app that you're building, it's not going to cost you anything extra with AppGyver. The fourth and definitely one of the most attractive things about AppGyver is that it's free. You can build an iOS, Android web app, and it's not going to cost you anything, which is really, really cool. A lot of the other no-code, low-code tools do have a free tier where you're able to at least build and test things out. But if you want to deploy it or you want to deploy it to both iOS and Apple, that's going to cost you extra. <clears throat> so that's one of the really unique things about their business model. And I think if they continue to have this forever free tier for developers and people that are just starting out, 
I think they're going to own a lot of market share. AppGyver was recently acquired by SAP at the beginning of 2021. So we'll see kind of how things shake out. The fifth thing that's really powerful is that you can build both iOS, Android, and for the web for free, as we already discussed, but also you don't have to create another project. What I mean is if you're developing a mobile app and you want it to be on both iOS and Android, there's almost zero extra customization that you have to do for each platform. So with your one design, you can deploy it to both Apple and to Android, which is really cool. So that's one thing that's really awesome. I will say that there are a little bit more nuances when it comes to the web version, just because the sizing is very different and some of the native features that you have on an iPhone or an Android device that pop up, like the calendar that's kind of built in there that's default for the different devices, those things won't work on web. So there's a couple nuances um, that you've got to that you've got to think about when developing and using one design for all three. But otherwise, especially if you're just doing mobile, super easy and it's very limited customization that you have to do for each platform. And that is definitely a huge plus. So those are the really positive things that I love about AppGyver. Now we're gonna talk about five things that are not so great, that are limitations and things that you must consider before you sign up with AppGyver and decide to build. It is a pain to set up an Apple and Google developer account. Now this isn't gonna be specific to AppGyver. It's really on Google and Apple. They just don't make it that easy for non-developers to set up developer accounts. I mean, the name is a developer account, so I get it. But for, the, for those of us that aren't super technical, it is a little bit arduous process. Luckily, AppGyver does have some tutorials and documentation on that, but it's only limited in terms of what all they can do. So that is one downside. But the good news is that you're able to create your own developer account, which means your company's name is there when it's in the app stores. When you want to monetize, it's going to come through your developer account. You're going to be able to change and control anything that you want whenever you want. So that is why it is important to have a developer account. Now, if none of that's important to you, then it really doesn't matter. Some of the other tools out there do allow you to deploy to their developer accounts, if that makes sense. So it would say that company's name. There's a little bit of nuances here. This is ever evolving, but that was one of the ways that you can quickly get your app deployed. Definitely look into each tool if you're not looking at AppGyver, but that is one thing that you need to think about is it is gonna take a little bit of time and learning to get to that point where you can actually launch your application. Number seven, and the second thing that uh, is a limitation when it comes to using AppGyver is that you can't take the code with you. Well, I know I just talked about you can deploy to Google and Apple with the click of a button, you get the downloaded file and then you've got to upload it. So it's, I say a click of a button, but you get the file that you need to upload into your developer account with the click of a button. The issue is you're not really able to get the actual code. So if you do plan on you know, developing this outside of AppGyver and wanting to phase them out, you're not going to be able to take that code and go use it somewhere else. But to be honest, you're probably not looking at any no code solutions because none of them really allow you to do that. They kind of trap you into the platform whether intentionally or not intentionally, it's just the really the easiest way for them to deploy apps. And then also from their business model perspective, they want you to continue to use the platform. So that is one just downside of no code in general. But the upside is that you can quickly deploy apps. It's not gonna cost you as much. And if you do go decide to develop something custom, you've at least got a template and you know what works and you can figure out what you wanna change based on that. So that is one thing that you need to make sure that you're aware of if you're hoping to just get all this code that you can then go play with and give to an actual developer, that's not gonna be that, the case. Number eight, the third thing that is uh, not great about AppGyver is there is a little bit of a limited design control. Now each low code, no code tool is gonna have some sort of limitations and this just happens to be one of AppGyver's. They do allow you to do a lot of various customization work but you really need to be a designer, understand how to design for applications to really maximize and make things look super, super pretty. So if the user experience is the number one thing and everything's gotta be perfect and you want all these crazy animations and all that stuff, you can do it, but you really need to have that design background. So if you don't have the design background, just know that you'll probably be using more of their default settings, which aren't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not gonna be like a life-changing experience. So that's one thing that you should be aware of. So number nine, AppGyver is a newer player in the space, so there's less experts. And that's something to be aware of, is that there's just gonna be less people with a ton of experience on AppGyver. 
the company's been around for a long time, but they didn't really release this no code to the public free version until a couple of years ago, late 2019, early 2020. So there hasn't been as much time for people to really get to know the tool. That being said, there's all kinds of content and videos that are being created from tutorials, more people on the forums, they're growing their user base. So this is changing. Case in point, this video <laughs> talking about AppGyver. So it's changing, but if you're looking for people that are super, super experts, it's gonna be a smaller sub, sub segment. But if you're on the forums and you're active and asking questions, you can find those people that are experts pretty easily. The other thing is that there are no code and low code agencies that you can look into. They don't specialize just in AppGyver. They work with a number of different tools, but I can make a couple recommendations. I've had two um, on the podcast actually previously, Doc Williams with Brand Factory and then Mike Williams with Build Lab. Neither are related that I'm, that I'm aware of, but they both happen to share a last name and share the fact that they are super knowledgeable when it comes to these no-code platforms, specifically AppGyver. And the last thing that you need to be concerned with when it comes to AppGyver is notifications. You can do push, email, text, all that stuff using AppGyver. The issue is, is that it's not directly integrated into the platform, right? So there's some other no code and low code tools where it's kind of like built into the interface and it's a little bit easier. When it comes to AppGyver, you mostly have to set this up on your own. And this was probably one of the, the, the biggest challenges, but also opportunities because there's some no code builders that you can't do any push notifications. AppGyver allows you to do push notifications the way it's built. Bubble, and again, this, is, this will be something that you'll have to check because I'm sure they're working on developing the platform, but one of the reasons that Bubble, which is one of the established players, I didn't choose when I was building Ostrich is because you couldn't do push notifications. You could do a progressive web app and turn, turn the web app into a mobile app and it kind of looked and felt the same, but at the end of the day, the notifications were absolutely crucial and so we didn't use Bubble and found AppGyver instead. And so that's something to be really cognizant of. You will probably need some help setting up a notification system. You can connect to things like Twilio, SendGrid to do text and email notifications. When it comes to push notifications, I use Firebase as the back end there. So there's all these different tools that you can use, but you're gonna have to kind of build it yourself. So that is one thing that you do need to be aware of. So if you don't have your own notification system, you are gonna have to think about that um, before you build your app with AppGyver. So those are the 10 things that you need to know before you build an app with AppGyver. I will say that it's hard to beat free, right? I think that's one of the number one things that is great about AppGyver. It's also pretty intuitive of making logic and creating complex apps, which is awesome. And the fact that you can build mobile altogether, Android and iOS, without really doing any customization um, for each platform, which is really, really cool. If you're building with AppGyver, let me know. Please share the project so that we can take a look if you've got an app that's live or something that you're working on. I think it'd be really cool to get those there. And then if you have any other comments or questions, please go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. And we'll happy to get to those and hopefully answer those for you so that you can make the right decision when it comes to building with AppGyver. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and pound that subscribe and follow button so you get notified when new episodes of Silicon Alley air. And also go check out those podcasts with the no code, low code guys. So I'll link to those in the show notes. Thanks so much. I'm William Glass, CEO and co-founder of Ostrich, and of course, your host of Silicon Alley.